My name is Alexander Knopp, and this is Introduction to Mathematical Logic. In the previous video, we discussed how to prove some tautologies in propositional logic. In this video, we are going to discuss a more natural way to do this. And because of this, this method is known as natural deduction. In the previous video, we proved the contraposition argument. We proved that if you know that p implies q, you can derive that not q implies not p. We also proved modus ponens. We proved that if you know p and you know that p implies q is true, then you can conclude that q is also true. Let's use these two arguments in order to prove something more complicated. Imagine that we know that not q and we also know that p implies q. And we wish to conclude that not p is true. So let's write it using the Fitch notation, which we are going to use in the future. So we know that not q, we also know that p implies q. These are our assumptions, so we separate it from the actual proof by the line. Okay. First step of the proof is the following. We know that p implies q, so by the contraposition, we know that not q implies not p. We write the, argument, the name of the argument and the line we use to use this argument, so the second line. After that, we need one more step. We also know that not q is true, and we know this implication. So by modus ponens, we know that not p is true. In other words, we can use these arguments or tautologies we proved before to prove another tautology. Let's specify what kind of rules we are going to use, what specific rules we are going to use in natural deduction, because we cannot say that, okay, we can use any tautology, because there are way too many of them, and actually it's enough to have only nine of them. The first one is kind of silly. It says that if you have A and B, you can conclude that A and B is also true. But if you write it as a rule, it's not so useless. So if you derive A and you derive B on mth and nth rows, then you can derive A and B using the introduction of the conjunction rule. The second tautology is if you know A and B, you can conclude that A should be true. In other words, if you derived A and B, you can conclude A or B using the elimination of the conjunction rule. Third rule is looking silly again. It said that if you have A implies B, then you have that A implies B. But as a rule, it seems like this. If you, under the assumption A, you can derive B, then A implies B, and it's called the introduction of the implication. The fourth rule is the modus ponens rule. If you have A and you have A implies B, you can conclude B. We also call it the elimination of the implication because we remove this implication. The next tautology says that if you have A, then A or B should be true. And you can write them like this. The third, the sixth rule is a bit more tricky. It says that if you know that A or B, and you know that if A then C, and if B then C, you can conclude that C should be true as well. So if you know that A or B, and under the assumption that A is true, you can derive C, and under the assumption B, you can derive C, then you can altogether conclude C, and it's called the elimination of, of disjunction. The seventh rule is if you can derive the contradiction, this sign denotes a constant false function, um, then you know that negation of A should be true. It's like proof by contradiction. So if the under assumption you derive a contradiction, you know that A is not true, and vice versa. If you under the assumption not A, 
you can derive the contradiction, you know that A should be true. And it's called introduction of negation. The eighth rule said that if you know that A and not A are, then you can derive the contradiction and it's written like this. Finally, if you have a contradiction, you can derive everything. And the rule looks like this. Let's use these rules to prove the law of excluded middle. In other words, let's prove that A or not A is a tautology. Okay, so we don't have any assumption since it's a tautology. Let's prove it by, the con by a contradiction. Let's assume that it's not true. So assume that not A or not A. And let's consider the cases. Assume that A is true. In this case, we can weaken this using the introduction of disjunction and get A or not A by introduction of disjunction. So one, two, three. After that, we may note that this two gives a contradiction by elimination of negation. This is the fourth line. And since we dis derived a contradiction, we can get not A by introduction of negation. Finally, we can rewrite it as A or not A by introduction of disjunction. And this and this gives a contradiction. And in other words, if we assume that negation of A or not A is true, then we get a contradiction. So A or not A should be true. which is what we wanted to prove. And it finishes the proof. In this video, we discuss natural deductions. In the comments, you can find the link to an online tool where you can write the proofs in this system and verify them automatically. And also, there are some exercises you can try to do. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. See you later.